Welcome to Turbo Charger Showdown. Well, kind of. This is a 2022 Kia Sorento and it has a 2.5 liter turbocharged engine and has issues with the turbocharger. It's got an underboost condition versus a 2020 Mazda CX-9 with a 2.5 liter turbo turbocharged engine. Um, and uh, that uh, Mazda we are going to be replacing the turbocharger on, but we're not gonna be doing that in this video. We're gonna be doing it in another video. Um, and uh, if you um, get onto to, uh, Shop Foreman Garage on Facebook, um, I put a little teaser in there a while back about that. We are going to be replacing a turbocharger in that um, CX-9. Um, but this one, we need to diagnose and get in here and diagnose it and find out what's going on with the underboost condition. And in the end, we can compare what we got to do to this vehicle to fix a turbocharger as compared to the CX-9. And um, it's the differences are, to me, are they're astounding. Um, so uh, let's get into this. Let's diagnose this uh, turbocharger and find out what's going on. Hey guys, yeah, I know, who's, who's this? Well, it's been a couple months and yeah, the beard's gone. So uh, a couple of videos back, I had uh, talked about um, the state of the channel and in that video, I'll put a link right here. If you haven't seen it, you can go check it out. And uh, I had asked, you know, it, uh, what y'all think about me just shaving my beard off because I'm tired of it, you know. Only got one response. I said, take the beard off. Okay, so that's fine with me. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Start new, you know. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna get into the diagnostic on this thing and uh, Bearded Mike will start diagnosing this thing. And uh, a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a spoiler alert. Um, this thing needs a turbocharger. So um, I, first I thought it needed a, um, a wastegate actuator and um, it, and, and you can replace the wastegate actuators on this and I wanted to compare it to the uh, CX-9. Uh, we just did a CX-9, uh, I think it was a uh, 2020 CX-9 2.5 liter turbo and we just replaced that turbo and I showed you how I replace the turbos in those because there ain't no room there. We, get, we just pulled the entire engine out and stuff. Uh, if you haven't checked out that one, I'll put a link right here and go check it out. Um, but <clears throat> this one um, I was getting into, I thought it was gonna be an actuator. I started doing the diagnostics and you'll see that I start to get into the diagnostics and that something didn't make sense. I contacted TechLine. TechLine, um, uh, didn't really get back to me, you know, very well. And then I found that the turbo's just locked up. So, um, spoiler alert, we are going to replace the turbo in this. And uh, if you want, you can just skip ahead to that part if you don't want to see the diagnostics of what I went through to try and diagnose this. Um, and uh, the thing is, there's nothing, there's nothing that uh, tells you right away, hey, the turbo's locked up. You know, it's just, I'm not getting any boost. And uh, I have to uh, follow the codes that are in there and the flow charts and try and figure it out. And when it wasn't making sense, I contacted TechLine and uh, they didn't even get back to me very quick. They didn't know what was going on. Finally, I realized, hey, this thing's not getting boost. Uh, maybe it's turbo's not spinning. And sure enough, it's not spinning. So uh, let's get back into the diagnostics. And if you want to skip ahead to the turbo replacement, so you can do that. So I'll see you there.
You gotta be kidding me. Got it. <laughs> so this is the turbocharger on this 2.5 liter gasoline direct injected engine. And um, it's not bad, you know, I mean, compared to Mazda, you know, the Mazda's uh, Turbocharger. I mean, it's practically behind the audio unit. It's shoved in there so much. I'm not saying this thing's good. I mean, you know, it does bite, and um, it's got. It's kind of hard to get to from underneath because of the all-wheel drive system. I, I don't know why everybody nowadays they have to have all-wheel drive. You know, I mean, what is? I mean, our ancestors. You know, they drove around fine with two wheel, one wheel, one wheel wonders. You know, you. Um, you know, get stuck on the side of the road, one wheel turns and one wheel doesn't, you know, and, uh, but, you know, people will see you stuck on the side of the road, they stop, they get out and they help, you need to push and they push them, well, nowadays, you know, well, uh, you prove my point, you know, uh, people, they don't help, so I guess it's better to have an all wheel drive so you don't get stuck, so, anyway, um, we need to check uh, the connector on this, um, uh, electronic wastegate actuator. We want to check voltages and stuff like that. So I got the connector out. It was tough. I had to climb up on top of there and now I dropped. Oh no, here it is right here. So we're going to check these voltages uh, real quick and uh, I'll show you how we do that. Okay, yesterday I ran some tests on this vehicle and um, I'm going to show you the results of the test. Uh, the thing is, uh, we had to get the thing up to temperature, you know, like 208 degrees. And then uh, we need to do the tests that we're going to be doing right now. Um, the thing is, you don't want to be sticking your arm, you know, around that turbo to try and get that connector disconnected when the engine's at 208 degrees, because I guarantee you that turbo is a lot hotter. So I had to let the thing cool down. Uh, so this morning we're going to run the other tests, but I'm going to show you uh, the results of a test that I ran yesterday. All right, this is the test that I ran yesterday, and uh, this is basically the specs of the data that they're wanting you to look at you know in actual engine speed water temperature wastegate position uh, percentage and uh, turbocharger boost uh, pressure what's the pressure and the uh, turbocharger um, uh, bypass valve actuation um, so the, this is the results this is just a snapshot of the KDS and so we can go back and we can compare them. So I, uh, the, right here, they are running at 787 RPM. That's idle, right? The lowest I could get is 801. Um, and their water, te the, our water temperature got up to 208, it's 206 to 208. And uh, their water temperature uh, sitting around 208 had gotten up to 215. Um, and so we're just comparing these results. I went ahead and I put the uh, wastegate uh, position set point, you know, where it shows the set point and then it shows the actual wastegate position. And I was at 82%, 82.39%. I had a maximum of 97%. Um, their uh, wastegate position is at 92.8%. And they had a maximum of 95%. So my maximum was higher than theirs, but at idle, which our idle is lower, we're at 82%, where they're at 92. So, and uh, the main thing is uh, the uh, turbocharger boost pressure. Um, 986.2 HPA, and uh, they are at 1007.4 uh, HPA. They had a maximum of uh, 111 uh, 0.3 right uh, my maximum was uh, 986 
um, but I had a uh, maximum uh, so when it, over here when I was revving the engine um, I went to 5,000 rpms trying to heat this thing up they only went to 4,513 what does that matter well they got more boost than me at lower rpm and this is the maximum amount of boost that I could get so this right here it's just not right uh, you were all they all they give us is compare this to this and they're basically saying is it good or is it not there's the current data is it good it's not no it's not so we need to go to the system inspection procedure um, and what we did is basically just check everything look, make sure all the uh, the circuits and everything look good uh, here's the electronic wastegate you know we got uh, five pins right here uh, everything is going to the ECM ECM PCM pretty much uh, so this is uh, just the power so we're gonna we're gonna check these voltages right here and this is the test we're gonna do uh, ignition off uh, disconnect electronic connectors uh, from the component we just did that so uh, we're going from terminal all these terminals all five of them to ground and it's gonna it's giving us our voltages you know um, and so that that's basically what we're gonna test um, this connector right here here is a picture of the connector so we know which side to start from um, and we're going to start from uh, terminal one right here terminal one the chassis ground and uh, terminal one right here shows a DC motor negative so according to this we should get 1.7 volts so uh, let's get into that test that and see what we got okay uh, the first thing we're going to do is we are checking this uh, number one right here, which is a green wire. <clears throat> and I have the voltmeter hooked up here. I got it hooked up to ground. I am going to take this and I'm going to hook this up to the battery just to see what we got. So the key is on and we're sitting at 11.98 uh, volts. So it's a good to make sure that your battery's good before you start testing voltages and stuff. Uh, I have this thing hooked up right here to the green wire. I don't know if you can see that. So just try and keep this thing from shorting on anything. Come on. Okay, and I'm gonna take this, hook this right there, and I got 0 0.014 volts. Okay, this shows 0 0.014 volts, um, which is not what the, uh, this thing says. This thing says it should be approximately 1.7 volts but we are going to the ground motor you know so this is actually a ground we're going ground to ground so um might have to just take that with a grain of salt let's see what else we got here you know we're going to uh terminal number two which says that it should be approximately zero volts Ter terminal number two is a positive so Let's go to that one and check it. Uh, let me uh, get this set up. Okay, I have the thing hooked up to number two right there. And it is the yellow wire. Got the thing hooked up. I'm sitting at 0 0.014 volts. And um, this is the yellow wire, number two. And which is uh, DC power 
key is on and it says it should be zero volts. Well, 0 0.01 is pretty much zero volts. So uh, let's uh, go to the next one and see what it says to do. Okay, now I have it hooked to terminal five. Terminal five is the ECM power and it is going directly to this power supply right here. And uh, of course it says it should be approximately five volts. And right here I got uh, 4.997 volts. So I would say that's approximately five volts. Um, the next one we're gonna check is uh, number three, then number four. They both should be at zero volts. Um, and um, three and four is your ground and signal. So um, let's uh, get to those and, and check them. All right, this one is sitting at 0 0.014, uh, just like the other ones, you know, and they're supposed to be at zero. So I would say that that 0 0.014 that we got for uh, chassis ground from the uh, ECM uh, was zero volts. So uh, let's go to the next one. This is number four. Yeah, let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. It's just so tough. I'm just gonna move it one over right there. And this terminal is meant to go inside there so it doesn't mess it up or anything. So there it is, 0 0.014. And, uh, and we are going to ground right here. So from everything I see, everything right here is correct, but there's a big question mark on this one right here. Approximately 1.7 volts. We had pretty much zero volts right there. So that may come back and bite us. Um, may have to check into that some more. But let's go on to the next test. Okay, um, so uh, whenever uh, there's any kind of discrepancy in the voltages that you're supposed to be reading, uh, the only thing Kia ever says is to uh, fix whatever is wrong and then go to verification or repair. So they don't even tell you, you know. Um, so what I did was this particular connector right here. Uh, where's the schematic? So it goes through this connector right here and it goes to the PCM, ECM. So I just went directly right here. So this is almost impossible to see, but here's the PCM. There's a connector right there. I stuck my back probe tester in there and I'm still going to ground and I'm still getting 0.014 volts. So uh, there are particular cases, actually quite a few, in which I've given information like that to TechLine and they just say ignore it, you know. Uh, it is a, a negative, um, it's the negative terminal to the motor, which is the actuator for the um, wastegate. So I don't understand how it would even have 1.7 volts at that connector with the, with the key on. It shouldn't have anything. Um, so uh, we're just gonna move on. We're gonna move on to the next thing and see, see what we see. Um, so let me get this all put back together and let's move on to the next thing and see what happens. Okay, this is what we're looking at here. Uh, here's a turbo. It's uh, not too much different than the uh, CX-9, the turbo's sitting here in the back, but we ain't got all these um, wires and tubes and stuff, you know, everything in the way. Um, Mazda likes to put a lot of wires and tubes and stuff on everything. Um, so, and, and look at this right here. There is a V-band. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> there is a V-band clamp right there holding the, um, the uh, catalytic converter onto the, to the turbo. I mean, you just take one bolt loose and pull that off and the catalytic converter comes off. There's no studs to break or anything like that. 
and there's a lot more room right here and I'll show you how we can make more room. I've already started taking some stuff apart. I'm gonna get this up in the air and uh, show you uh, what I've started doing already. Okay, I got the thing up in the air. I got the tires off. Um, and I'll show you what I've done so far. Um, so I got this exhaust loose right here. And let's so get this down. I got the dog bone mount off and of course the undercovers and this is where the dog bone mount went right there and this thing is a all-wheel drive so yeah I got the uh, drive shaft off just hanging right here and there's the catalytic converter and you know there's not a whole lot of room up here you know um, but I'll show you how we can make some room and uh, it's the same way you could do the same thing uh, uh, working on a Mazda CX-9 uh, to get a little bit of room but Mazda doesn't have a lot of room to begin with uh, this doesn't have a lot of room but we can we can make enough room that uh, it'll work uh, this does have uh, the entire uh, subframe the full subframe just like Mazda uh, CX-9 did but we're not going to drop the subframe we're not going to drop this engine out or anything we are going to pull the turbo out uh, with the engine in and I'll show you how we do that, and you can compare that to uh, the way that we did that CX-9. Um, so uh, let's get into it and see what happens. Okay, so this is how we are going to make a little bit of more, a little bit of, little bit of, a little bit more room right here, uh, so we can get in there. Uh, I have the um, front of the engine mount loose right here. And um, as you saw, I, I got that dog bone mount off. And down here, I don't know if you can see this, I have this jack and with a block of wood up against the oil pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack this up. Well, actually, it's on the lift. I'm just gonna let the lift down a little bit and have that come off of that. And you see how it kind of came this way? I can move the jack with my foot and I can pull this. I don't know if you can see how much room I have. So I can grab this, pull it back, and then I am going to let the jack down. And it's this thing's gonna sit down somewhere over here. And it's gonna come down from here and come back. And it's gonna give me, hopefully, the amount of room that I need to get that catalytic converter out. If I can get that catalytic converter out through there, then I can get the turbo out. Um, and hopefully it's gonna give me a little bit more room on the bottom. We'll find out. I'm gonna pull this over. Then I need to get it back up on the lift. I need to start uh, draining some fluids, uh, coolant and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to probably, I gotta pull a battery out. The battery's dead, so uh, I'm gonna charge the battery. And uh, just anything over here, anything that's connected to the turbo is gonna come off and we'll just get right into it. And, and this one, in this case, um, I'll just let you know, uh, when this vehicle came in, it was low on oil, you know, and uh, I sold an oil change to the customer. And um, one of the things the tech line did ask me when I told him, hey, this turbo is locked up, He's, he told me to pull this banjo bolt out right here. This is the inlet to, um, or the, uh, the oil feed line is what that is. It's the oil feed line that feeds oil into the turbo. He told me to pull that inlet off and um, um, get a picture, a picture of the banjo bolt, picture inside the inlet, and you can look in there and you can see oil is coagulated inside there. You know, and um, that's probably why it starved for oil and it locked up because it starved for oil because the customer didn't do their oil changes. Either way, um, it took it took Techline a long time. I'm like, what's going on? You know, hello, are, are you still there? I was typing, are you still there? What's going on, you know? And finally, he's like, uh, just replace the turbo under regular warranty procedures. And so, okay, so we're warranting it. So that's good, good for the customer. So um, anyway, I'm gonna get this thing up and drain the fluids 
uh, bring it back down, uh, start taking all this stuff apart and uh, we'll see how it goes. This room I mean I pulled the catalytic converter out you know I mean two nuts right here a nut right there and then this v-band clamp and that's it that's all it took and I was able to just pull it right out of the top we got all this room right here you know so um, there's not much to it there's a couple cooler lines right in here I don't know if you can see that which uh, it looks like, you know, we're not gonna be able to get these out. We have hoses that we can take off. We'll take these hose clamps, pull these hoses off, and we can swap these over once we get the turbo out. And the oil feed line, I got another heat shield right here. I'll take out from the bottom, a couple bolts. Um, we have a the oil drain back line on the bottom. We need to get the oil drain back line off, get the oil feed line off here, and of course we'll have to take that off of the engine. We're gonna put a new one of those, so it doesn't matter if that thing gets bent, you know, if I bend it out of the way and take the thing out. You know, as long as I get it off of the engine before I put the new turbo in, that way, you know, I can uh, get uh, the new one in without bending it, you know, and um, get these uh, cooler lines off. Right now, I'm still kind of standing on this thing because I got my uh, water bucket underneath there so I need to get that out so I can bring it down a little bit lower because I just can't get my belly over this top of this front of this vehicle um, but uh, we're you know almost halfway there I probably doesn't pay very much to do this job um, I bet it pays more to do the Mazda one so uh, yeah let me uh, get this thing up and get that heat shield off um, see what I can do about those those hoses getting those hoses off it looks like this one right here i'm gonna have to take off from the top there's another hose over here so uh there's you know a couple tubes and stuff like that nothing compared to what mazda has uh so um yeah let me uh get that uh, off and then we'll see where we're at all right uh i forgot that this is all wheel drive <laughs> can you believe it i forgot so right here you can see right up in there those two bolts let me see if i can turn this light so it's not so bright so those two bolts right there that's the uh oil feed line right here this is the oil return line so i have got to get those bolts i don't know if you can see them gotta get those out and this is gonna be hard to to record me doing this so at these two bolts there i need to get out those two nuts and then there's two bolts right here then way way up there where the oil drain line is you know I can uh, have to get those out those are way up in there of course I get this heat shield off first this drain line our feed line has some clamps like there's a clamp right there it's got another clamp right there holding it so I need to get those two off and then, of course, I got a connector at the uh, the actuator connector uh, for the wastegate actuator. And then those hoses, they're not going to be as easy to get off as I thought because we got this all-wheel drive um, transfer case is in the way. 
so I'll probably get those off from the top and then we can get the exhaust bolts out and pull the thing off there's one hose right there or there's one clamp right there I can get that one off the other one I have to get from the top oh, there's another one right there but sitting over top of this I don't know uh, it depends whichever one's easier to get off and then that's the one I'll do you know so uh, let's get to that right now Here it is. And oh, I don't know. Y'all probably can't even see in there. Uh, let me set this down and I'll try to figure out how I can show you. This thing is like locked up solid. I can't turn it. I'm trying to turn it with my finger on the exhaust side. I can't get into the intake side. But uh, yeah, let me see if I can figure out how to show this to you. Okay, here it is. This is exhaust side turbine, and I'm trying to push it with this screwdriver, and see it won't. I can't even wedge it in there. I can't get it to turn. That's your wastegate right there. See if I can move this, mm. get it to come open. Nope. I can't. I can't move it. Anyway, this is the new one, of course. And you can see that wastegate is open. And there's a turbine in there. And I could spin it fairly easily. Uh, 
anyway. I don't want to mess it up. Uh, so I got these uh, coolant hoses. These are the coolant lines. I got these two banjo bolts. Uh, got to be transferred over here. We got a bunch of parts and stuff right here. This is the new uh, oil feed line. And of course, I uh, got a bunch of these washers right here. Uh, different sizes. Some of them are for coolant. Some of them are for oil. That's the uh, exhaust uh, gasket for the, the V-band uh, that goes to the exhaust side from the catalytic converter. I've got a couple of these um, gaskets for the uh, exhaust or the um, that's the oil drain our return line and then of course this exhaust gasket right here which goes right into here. It's not even a manifold it's just it's just a head right there. Cylinder head straight to the cylinder head and get this off of there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Uh, let me move these things over to the to the new one, and we'll just start putting them back in.
Okay, I ran to a snag. Oh. Yeah, pretty bad one. Um, I mean, oh my God, come on. So, you see this is the old turbo, of course. You see these two studs? Yeah, there ain't no studs up there. I, I don't even know if you can see way, way up there. There's no studs. And I got, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, whenever I was taking this thing out, um, <laughs> the, um, most of the, of the um, nuts and bolts and stuff that I took out, they all, all fell down. You know, they, I, they would just fall. And some of them would hit the ground, but most of them, you know, they hit the, um, the subframe and I found most of them except for one. So I got, this is one of the nuts that goes to the stud that are on here, you know. But I got all these nuts and bolts and stuff from the, um, from that um, battery pack that we did on the Kia Soul EV a while back. And these nuts are the same size, so. I was, one I couldn't find. It went into the, the subframe somewhere. So I'm not worried about that. You know, it's not anywhere that it's going to cause any kind of issues or anything like that. But these, that's an issue. I got to get these out. I don't know if, see if uh, my new stub remover set will fit in there. Uh, getting these out is not the hard part. It's getting them in because the turbo's already in. Come on, seriously, oh, why didn't it come with the studs? It just, <laughs> oh man, okay. Let me um, see if I can get these out. Okay, so this one fits right on there. So let's see if it comes out without munching the stud or breaking it. Uh, it feels like it's coming out. It's, it's on there pretty tight. Great. Come on, get out of there. Come down today. It looks like it's coming out. Okay, that's one. So hopefully, we can get the. Oh, we can't get it out. <laughs> uh, okay, let me see if I can st stick this in there and then we'll get the other one. Okay, <laughs> I got them in. Um, and I wish I could have shown you, but it's just impossible. It's not impossible for me to see it. Um, but I can show you now if I can get up here without things getting snug, snagged up. So. I don't even know if I'm showing you the right thing, but somewhere up in there, they're there. Okay, so now I gotta get this up in there. Get that snagged on there. Come on, get in there. Okay, got that there. And uh, of course that stuff's in the way, so you can't see. But uh, we can get around here. Yeah, right there. There you go, something like that. So I need to get these bolts lined up here. And those are new, new. <laughs> those nuts put up there, and I get that in, and I get the the uh, heat shell put in, and we're getting pretty close. So let me do that. Let's see if we can get this in there. I got the new gasket on it already. So I want to drop the gasket. It's right. Right like that. 
this V band on there. Put the bolt somewhere up here. Get that started. God, this is just so, 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 so easy compared to trying to do that masa with the studs that like to break. And I got one nut down here. down here make sure that I got that bracket yeah the bracket is on the studs going through the bracket down below so I can tighten these up down the back side and that's a 14 millimeter there too and get the air ratchet sorry about the wind noise got air flowing because it's hot that is it I got these two O2 sensors. This one's gonna sit down in here like that. Plug in there. This one clips down on this bracket. I don't know if you can see this. Probably not. Plug that one in. Put this heat shield right here. This way, and then I'll get those nuts put on that bracket down below, move the thing into place, hook up the exhaust, the rear drive shaft, and then that should be it. Everything looks good, so we get that stuffed up, uh, hooked up down below. to evacuate this cooling system there she is everything's in put back together um, there were a couple things that uh, I didn't show you how I put them back together but I showed you how I took them apart and as a matter of fact the hardest part of this entire job was uh, trying to figure out how to set up the camera so y'all could see what's going on um, that's pretty much it. There's not a lot of room up under there, but uh, as you can see, I mean, I already got the thing in. Uh, it is, um, it's about 5:20, and I started like really late. So this uh, did not take that long uh, to do. Matter of fact, I kind of dilly dallied around with it and everything. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna um, get cooling in this thing, and then we'll start it up and uh, see see how she runs.
thing filled with coolant. Oh, well, it's not filled. It's got a gallon in there. Got this thing evacuated. So I'm going to hit this. Start sucking coolant in. Start sucking that down. And hopefully, yeah, it's going down. I don't want to suck any air. Oh, there it goes. Shut it off. It's still got. Okay. Let me get some more coolant. <laughs> and uh, then I'll get this on there and then uh, we can start her up and uh, get the coolant system burped of all the air that I just put in it. So, uh, yeah, let me get some more coolant. Okay. So. I got the coolant fill, it's overfilled, but I know it's gonna burp out some. I uh, got everything together. One thing I forgot to do is take this battery out and charge it. So let's, let's see if it even cranks over. I mean, maybe yeah, it might be all right. Uh, I don't know, I know it was, it was kind of low, so let's see what it does. It started. A little bit shaky, but she started. Let's see if let's see if we can hear some boost. Uh, it's hard to tell. These uh, things they limit. They limit the amount of rev you can you can do when you're just sitting here revving on it, you know. I, I guess they don't want you to, you know, spin that turbo up, you know, for no reason. Um, so I guess uh, let me get all this put together and uh, we'll just uh, drive it around and see how she performs. Let's see what happens. Okay. Let's... Take her out on the road, see how she performs. Got no weird noises or anything like that. Before, I mean, she was a dog. It just had no power at all. I couldn't even take it on the road. I'd go right out of one entrance and right into the other entrance. I mean, it just, uh, I, there ain't no sense in taking it out on the road. It just had no, no, uh, Power at all, and we'll see what it does. Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, I could tell right, right away. Yeah, it wouldn't do anything like that before. No, nothing. I mean, it push you in. I mean, you could get out and walk faster, honestly. It was just. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, she's going. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. I don't even know if y'all guys can even see me. Uh, Oh yeah, it's it's like a hundred and ten percent, you know, hundred ten point five two six percent better, for sure. I mean, <laughs> night and day. Yeah, it was, uh, and I ain't kidding. You know, you could probably get out and just like run around the car while I was trying to take off. It was so slow. It was ridiculously slow. Now uh, it's she's acting like she's supposed to, and I got no check engine light. I got no uh, no lights on at all, and I mean, there's uh, I replaced the HECU in this thing too. Um, it had uh, issues with um, uh, 
about can communication issues and everything like that. It's a whole nother diagnostic that I did. I did not film any of that stuff. Uh, so, uh, sorry about that. Um, but uh, that was uh, kind of a, it had gotten to a point where it was actually kind of a shot in the dark, you know. Uh, but I was pretty sure that that's probably what the deal was. Oh, yeah. We got some power now. But yeah, I was pretty sure that's what the deal was, um, that uh, the uh, can communication was being brought, draw, drawn down by the HECU and it had all kinds of uh, lane departure, um, front um, brake assist and, you know, lane deviations and, you know, I'm braking while I'm driving codes and all kinds of stuff, downhill, suffering, you know, and, and I, I just went ahead and, uh, yeah, I figured it's got to be the um, HECU, so uh, I replaced that. I replaced that this morning. That's why we kind of got a late start on this. And even with the late start, we got this thing done, you know, no problem. Um, it was a lot easier to replace than that Masa. Uh, so, yeah, it's good. Okay, guys, that's going to pretty much do it for this one. Um, this uh, was like two months in the making of this video. It, it just took a long time for uh, the customer to decide what they're going to do. It took a long time for a tech line. It took a long time for the parts to come in. Uh, it took me a while. I still got to put a couple things together here because um, I took a bunch of stuff apart to diagnose uh, can communication errors and stuff like that. Um, and uh, this uh, would have gone uh, a lot quicker if I wasn't filming. And plus I did some messing around i got a lot of technicians coming up and talking to me today i don't know i mean they think i'm a new guy or something they don't recognize me you know i, I maybe maybe i, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> um but um uh, you could see how this was just so much easier uh to get this turbo out than uh that cx9 uh, was and um, it's just uh, the way that the thing is uh, built and that V clamp now oh, man that makes such a big difference um, and I'm sure that this, the newer Mazdas probably have those V clamps on them too I, I really don't know I haven't paid attention to that but um, that's uh, pretty much it for this one it's uh, done running running really good and um, I appreciate the heck out of each and every one of you. Do not forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? It's free. You know, it doesn't cost anything. You just uh, click the subscribe button. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.